Hey, hello. Are you a woodworker? Are you just starting? You've been in woodworking quite a bit and you watch YouTube uh, woodworking channels and you look at the nice clean shops and all the nice toys that they have and you just dream of being like that one day. And at the end of the day, when you watch it, do you feel inadequate as a woodworker? Well, I'm here to talk to you about that and hopefully change your perspective of what a real woodworker looks like. Hi, my name is Tim and welcome to Tim's Designs and I am a woodworker. I have been woodworking since off, off and on since I was probably about 13 years old when I took my first industrial arts class back in junior high school. And I say off and on because I spent a lot of time in the military and you know, I, sometimes I had a shop, sometimes I didn't. A lot of times I had to go to the on post craft shop to be able to do woodworking because I wasn't able to have a shop in my house. You know, my first shop was back in 1993 uh, when I was stationed in, in Texas. And I was able to have that shop for two years and I had to do a ch uh, change of station and pack it up and I didn't get to have my own dedicated shop until about six years ago, the one that I'm standing in right now. I was able to do a lot of woodworking you know, on saw horses outside the house, you know, doing work for other people. But I really didn't get to do the things that I wanted to do uh, on my own time in my own shop. Now, I spent a lot of time looking at YouTube. I've looked at all the great YouTube woodworkers out there and they uh, have a lot of inspiration. Look at their tools, when you dream about having all the tools and that type of thing. And at the end of the day, most of us will never be able to achieve that level of success, unfortunately. You know, some of us will in some capacities, you know, it's a journey. And in the last couple of years, you know, my wife's been encouraged me to, you know, start some YouTube uh, videos about it. And I kept on looking around at my shop and while my shop doesn't look good, it's not clean, I need to do this before I do the YouTube. But I got realized that, hey, most of, of you out there are probably just like me. And we don't have the big glamour shops, but we'd like to be able to learn some things. And I have things that I've learned over the years. I'm also a teacher. I teach uh, construction. I teach uh, what's called production systems, but it's kind of like a woodworking shop in, in school. And I get to use a lot of good toys there. I have some here in my shop, but at the end of the day, I like to do woodworking. I like to make things, and I'm pro probably going to end up being more of a woodworker than I'm a YouTuber. But I'm going to come to you raw, and I'm not going to do a lot of editing. I'm going to just talk to you about the things I learned. I'm going to talk to you about my shop and what an uh, average shop looks like. And I'm going to show you around what a working shop really looks like and please excuse the mess. Um, you might see some things that doesn't look quite safe, but it's my shop. I'm able to produce quite a bit, a few things in here. And yes, I do clean it up, but as soon as I start making stuff, hey, it goes back, you know, to being dirty. But here we go. So when you look around my shop, one of the first things I put in here, and this was a dedicated shop. I mean, it's a it was just all open, had a tractor in here when I took over. And uh, I got all these cabinets right here from Habitat for Humanity. Got them for about $10 each. Uh, they don't look pretty, but they're functional. And they didn't cost me a lot of money to be able to put in. You know, the countertop back here is sitting on, you know, that's pretty much just a free headboard. And I may upgrade it at one day. And this shop has been in transformation. It'll probably continue to be in transformation. I've been able to make a lot of good improvements. And this is my uh, big work table here. This was an old kind of butcher block tabletop. I've got it out of uh, you know one of the kind of junk stores. And then I found this old architectural desk in a in a uh, Habitat for Humanity. I got that for fifty bucks. I think I got everything to include the vices here, and I maybe have $150 invested in this table. It works well. As you see, I've got things spread across it, but I can work on this end, throw my junk down there, glue up something here, you know, put it down there while I'm gluing up something or sanding here. And over here, I've had those uh, chest of drawers there since the Army. Back in the day, we could buy some things uh, when I was stationed in Europe, and that is ugly. 
but it holds a lot of stuff. Now this big metal cabinet's been kind of a sore. It was a great buy, I thought, in the beginning, but I've never really figured out what to use it for. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of it or, or keep it or not. And over here is a router table that I built, and the top of it is from uh, cubicle desktops. And I got plywood, and I got things thrown in there. I have a plan to close that out uh, under the bottom at some point here. Uh, not sure when that's going to happen. Maybe this winter. And come back around. I, I've got a bandsaw that I've got off of Facebook, and I won't show you the table saw yet. I'll save that for the last. You know, that's my baby here. And over here, I've got a lathe. I use sometimes, I use the sander. Yeah, I've got a welder that I do sometimes, part of a Harbor Freight dust collection system. I've upgrade, kind of modified, and you'll see that shortly. Now, this is one nice toy I've been able to add uh, not too long ago was this drum sander. I love it. It's a Laguna. It's a 1938. Uh, it saves me a lot of time. It takes a little bit to get used to if you're not used to drum sanders. And, uh, I bought this uh, big old saw right here that's kind of dangerous and, you know, this radial arm saw. And I had the idea that I was going to do some uh, non-blind rabbits with it and, and dados and things like that. But I'm going to tell you, this saw kind of scares me. And I do use it to cross cut some bigger boards. And, um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it or get rid of it. Over here is a miter saw that I've had for going on 20 years. That thing's made a lot of money for me. I've done a lot of trim work for customers over the years. And uh, I do like that saw. Uh, the only thing I would do is maybe upgrade to a, uh, a sliding compound miter saw and mm, get rid of that thing right there. But I can still accomplish the same thing with a, a circular saw. Now over here is my uh, dust collection system. It is a Harbor Freight. And I got a 55 gallon drum and I got the big old uh, dust devil there and hooked it up. And let me tell you something, it really did up the uh, cubic feet per minute that the, on the airflow. And I do not have any issues with airflow. I did build this closet back there. I thought I was going to use it for a paint booth, but it became a storage area. And uh, I'm in the process of trying to get rid of some things. And right here is an old Powermatic drill press. It's ugly, but it works good. I like it. You know, back over here, it, you see that tool chest? That was a, uh, actually a cabinet. I bought it for $9. I had some pegboard, and I modified it to hold some desks. The only thing I bought was the tracks there. It was the, it was the narrowest uh, sliding door tracks that I could find, and that holds a lot of stuff. I like it. And I keep a lot of nails and things that I need to get to. Down here, th these here were file cabinets from uh, you know, cubicles and with the desktop. And man, I got a lot of junk. I, I clean it up. And, man, I don't know what happens here. You know, it just ends up back this way. And I do have the nice DeWalt. I had this one here in my classroom. I don't think there's a better desktop type of planer out there. I did upgrade it to the Shelix head and I'll, I don't think I'll ever go back to blades after having done that. Now I'm saving the last piece right here and this was a big splurge this past summer. I do have one in my shop at school and I love it and I did get this nice uh, saw stop. I had the commercial at school. This is the professional grade and I love it. Uh, I don't have the guard on here. I, I really don't like using the guards you know, maybe I should, but I do have the riving knife in here, and I, I did buy this ink uh, sled, which I do love. I mean, it it squares it up. It's it's real good. And uh, so this is kind of my shop, and I'll get it clean. I'll get the dust off the floor, but as soon as I get into something, it, it kind of turns like this. And I'm very proud of my shop. It's taken me a lot of years to get to this level. And your shop might look something like this but it's okay. So what I'm here to tell you is that woodworking is a journey. It's what you want it to, it to be. 
If you're like me, yeah, I like having the toys. You know, I'd like to have the nice big shop. I'd like to have bigger than this, but I've worked in a lot smaller than this. I didn't have a shop. And I'm very grateful to have what I have. And you might be just like me. I don't know if you are, but I intend to put videos on here to talk to the, the average woodworker. You know, share the information that I've learned over the years that I continue to learn. It's a journey. It's something that I love to do. And my shop will probably always look like this because I am a woodworker first. I'm going to try to make this YouTube thing work a little bit. We'll see how it goes. And uh, just let me know uh, your thoughts on this. You know, if you're, you know, if you're not liking it, you know, you know, be, be kind on the thoughts. Be, constructive criticism is always appreciated. But I'll talk to you later, and I'll catch you on the next video. Hope you have a nice day. And this is Tim from Tim's Designs.